One of the biggest complaints for us in New Jersey when applying for and obtaining our New Jersey concealed carry license is the restrictions that the state here implements in order to decide where you can carry your firearm and where you cannot carry your firearm. In fact, I've seen many of you guys leave comments down below telling me that that's the main reason why you haven't even applied for your permit in the first place. Why go through the whole trouble of qualifying and paying all of these fees and everything if you can only carry half the time? And the way this ass backward state works, it changes what seems like every week. And it's been super, super confusing to me to know where I can and where I can't carry my firearm, which is also very important to know, especially in a state like this. So I wanted to give you a definitive answer as of right now, where you can and where you cannot carry your firearm with a concealed carry permit in the state of New Jersey. Let's get to it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you didn't already know, my name is Jay Costa, and I am just a red-blooded patriot here behind enemy lines in the state of New Jersey. And if you get value out of this video, please smash that like button down below and also consider subscribing if you want more firearms-related content and New Jersey firearms-related content. And in this video, I'm gonna go over with you where you can carry your firearm and where you cannot carry your firearm here in the state of New Jersey as of today, which is March 1st, 2024. I'll also go over the details in, and specifics in regards to uh, the laws that are currently in place and also give you some legal history about how we got here as well as kind of share with you my opinions on where we can expect ourselves to be in the future. So ever since the U.S. Supreme Court came to the conclusion in the Bruin decision that states like New Jersey that always restricted our Second Amendment rights completely now have have to respect our Second Amendment right to defend ourselves and our family. States like New Jersey have been trying to deter and thwart our right to defend ourselves since that case was decided. One of the ways they want to thwart our right to conceal carry is by restricting where we can and cannot carry in the state. And they basically tried to ban pretty much carrying everywhere other than your own property. Now, let's go back to the end of 2022 when the state of New Jersey, Governor Murphy and the New Jersey uh, state legislature, which is mostly Democrats, passed a so-called carry killer bill. This bill implemented vast restrictions in regards to where you can and can't carry with a concealed license in the state of New Jersey, among other things. Now, this included banning carrying in so-called what they called sensitive places. This included banning concealed carry in the following areas under extremely vague descriptions. These descriptions or definitions included things like where First Amendment rights needed to be protected, locations with vulnerable people, and high-density locations. I have a news flash for you. The state of New Jersey, the entire state is a high-density location. Of course, this is all purposely vague in order to leave the door open for them if they want to come down on you and get you on a technicality if they choose. So let's go into more detail in regards to what sensitive places they actually put in this carry killer bill. This includes in your own vehicle, private property, public gatherings, bars or restaurants where alcohol is served, entertainment facilities, public parks and recreation areas, state parks and state park service property, zoos, casinos, publicly owned libraries or museums, airports, healthcare facilities, places of government administration, courthouses, correctional facilities, state mandated or state licensed halfway houses, playgrounds, polling places, nursery schools, preschools, summer camps, schools, colleges, universities, child care facilities, youth sports events, homeless shelters, correctional facilities, cannabis dispensaries, energy plants, addiction or mental health facilities, and licensed residences for terminally ill or mentally disabled people. Now, shortly thereafter, our great friends over at ANJRPC decided to file a lawsuit against and challenging this carry killer bill. Because of this lawsuit, the court did block most of the restrictions put on us by the carry killer bill. And in retaliation, of course, New Jersey, the state of New Jersey decided to appeal the lawsuit brought by ANJRPC. And that's basically where we're at now. We're during the appeals process of that lawsuit brought by ANJRPC against the state of New Jersey. And during the appeals process, we have some of these sensitive areas allowed and some of them not allowed. And that's what we're going to go over right now. So you know where you can and can't carry so you don't get yourself in a whole bunch of trouble. Now, before sharing what seems like to me the current law during this appeal process, don't 
blame me. Don't come after me if I somehow get something wrong or something changes uh, after the publishing of this video. I am no legal analyst. I'm no legal scholar. I'm no attorney. I'm nobody. Do not listen to me and don't sue me. Please have your own attorney do your own due diligence for you. In, that way you know exactly when and where you can and cannot carry in the state of New Jersey and elsewhere. Anyway, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. As of today, March 1st, 2024, here is the list of uh, aforementioned sensitive places that were in the original carry killer bill in New Jersey that are currently allowed, where you're allowed to carry in the state of New Jersey. Number one, you can carry in your own vehicle. Number two, you can carry on private property, but only if it's open to the public or if the owner of the property consents to it. Just in case you're wondering, you can carry in state park service property. You can also carry in casino simulcast facilities, whatever that is. You can carry in public filmmaking locations. And lastly, you can carry at airports, but only to pick up and drop off, or if you're going to use it, um, you know, to travel. And that way you have to go through the federal airlines and federal restrictions in regards to transporting with a firearm. But you're not allowed to carry anywhere else around the terminal. And here are the locations that you cannot carry as of today. Zoos, casinos, within 100 feet of a public gathering. You cannot carry either on private property without an owner's consent or that is not open to the public. You cannot carry at a bar or a restaurant where any alcohol is served. You cannot carry at entertainment facilities. You cannot carry at publicly owned libraries or museums. Public parks and beaches are also not allowed to carry. You also can't carry at any place of government administration or healthcare facilities. You can't carry at a courthouse. You can't carry at a correctional facility. State contract contracted halfway houses cannot carry there. You can't carry at a playground. You can't carry at a polling place. You can't carry at airports. But like I said before, unless you are dropping off or picking up or transporting a firearm legally based on federally mandated uh, rules and regulations. You can't carry at nursery schools or preschools. You can't carry at a summer camp. You can't carry at a college or a university. You can't carry at child care facilities at all. You can't carry at youth sporting events. You cannot carry at homeless shelters. You cannot carry at cannabis dispensaries. You can't carry at an energy plant. You can't carry at addiction or mental health facilities. And you cannot carry at a location that is for mentally ill. So that's a long list of places you can't carry and a shorter list of places you can carry. That's where we're at right now. But that doesn't mean that it's permanent. They are going through this process as we speak. So it's all up in the air from here based on what I know from the ANJRPC website, as well as the emails that they uh, provide to me with updates on this case. The, the appeal of this lawsuit will go through the motions and we'll know sometime soon what the court decides on. But you should know that this is a temporary stay by the court while we're waiting for the appeals process to be done. Now, I'm no legal scholar, so I'll let those people comment on the actual legality and what to expect going from here, but based on my limited research, it does seem like we have a pretty good shot having most of the sensitive places and most of the carry killer bill overturned and blocked by the court, and I base this based on other decisions around the country after the Bruin case where basically we are seeing similar uh, states putting up and passing similar laws to restrict concealed carry and the courts in those states blocking most of what that state's trying to do. Oregon is one good example of this. That doesn't mean that it's a shoe in that most of this is going to be blocked. It can go one way or the other. Now, the most recent oral argument in this case was back in November. And by the way, the name of this case is Siegel versus Platkin, just in case you want to do your own research into it. This is when ANJRPC argued their, uh, their side in regards to why they believe and we believe that the carry killer bill and what's inside the carry killer bill is unconstitutional based on the Bruin decision. So hopefully we will get a decision soon. And even if the decision is not good, not positive for us. At the very least, I think a couple years down the road, there is a good shot from my limited research, like I said, that it could go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And if it gets there, I would like our chances in the current court's configuration anyway. Now, the best place to get updates from this is ANJRPC directly. It's also very important to support them, donate to them, become a member. I'm a member myself. They have a great range out uh, called the Cherry Ridge Range out in northwestern New Jersey. It's a great outdoor area that you get access to as a member, and they fight the good fight uh, to protect our Second Amendment rights in this state of New Jersey that we all know and love. So they're the best ones to get news from, but I will keep you guys up to date with any update 
that I see come my way. If you want more firearms related content, specifically in the state of New Jersey and blue states like it, let's call it like it is, you will love my firearms playlist. I'll put a link in the description as well as up here in the corner right now. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this case during the appeals process and what do you think about the, the state of New Jersey trying to limit our Second Amendment right, limit our right and our God-given right to defend ourselves and our family and our property. I would love to start a conversation with you down there and I will see you next time.